All right, so today is Friday, November the 30th, 2012, and I'm here with Clint Evans. We're doing the 2012 Holiday Survival Guide and Bailout Bag. Absolutely. So let's get into this. A lot of people travel around and go see family. It's a great, it's a time of year I love. Some people dread it, but uh, we're going to hopefully, a lot of people attracted to our message love this time of year. So how can we get a jump start on the new year of 2013, survive the holidays and have a, a fantastic experience all the while? Well, you know, the first thing that I've got in my bailout bag, um, independent of how you're traveling, whether it's, you know, car, bus, plane, ship, whatever, um, one of the biggest challenges is the um, uh, the ambient noise level around you, especially in airplanes and in cars and buses. Any type of, any type of vehicle that's outside of your home, you would be surprised uh, to, if you took a decibel meter and measured the level of noise. And so, I, you know, the absolute first thing that is always in my bailout bag or my travel bag is uh, foam rubber earplugs. Foam rubber. So you're talking about like the little kinds that shooters use when they're going to the shooting range, those little yeah. ones that you can fit right into your uh, your, your yeah. ear holes there? And in fact, um, you, I mean, you can go to drugstores um, and buy. They, I've seen them as expensive as uh, four or five dollars a pair at a drugstore. Don't do that. Go to um, uh, go to your local uh, sports section of a uh, you know a big box store like a, or I don't there. I guess they're not big box stores, but they're you know big. Uh, sporting oriented stores like Academy or even Walmart or any place that has a gun shop in it uh, and go to the hearing protection uh, section and like I buy uh, I buy a hundred pair I think they're 30 or 40 dollars so what what does that come I think it's I think it's 30 dollars so a hundred uh, divided by 30 is um, or, or uh, excuse me um uh, what, what does that come out to be? If I if I get a if I get a hundred pairs for uh, it's about uh, three cents, right? Or thirty yeah, cents? About 30, thirty cents 30, a piece? Yeah, thirty, 30 cents a pair. Yeah. So the difference between five dollars a pair or thirty five cents a pair, roughly. I mean, if you figure a little tax in there, I recommend you go freaking buy them uh, at the gun shop, or better, just go on Amazon and buy a box of a hundred pair. And my preference are the uh, the orange hexagonal ones from a company called uh, Silencio. They're like a 39 dB cut, which is, um, if you know much about music, uh, 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 a 39 decibel cut uh, is a huge amount of ambient noise reduced. And you can try this experiment. Here's a great experiment. You get on an airplane that's sitting on a tarmac, and the level of noise is horrendous. And you sit there for a few minutes and just check your physiology and see um, you'll feel tremendous tension in your body. And then you take these earplugs. What you do is you, you roll them between your fingers to make them small. And you stick them in your ears and let go of them. And they, you know, uh, reform uh, back to their natural form and, and basically clog up your ear canal. And you'll be surprised at how relaxed you become instantaneously. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about these earplugs, make sure that uh, once you inflate them, uh, if they're touching your eardrum, just pull them out slightly, especially if you're sleeping with them, because if you roll over on your side and you, um, you know, the pressure from your pillow pushes against one side of the earplug and that pushes against your eardrum, you will wake up with the most horrendous headache you've ever had. I mean, the pain is just indescribable. So uh, typically what I'll do is I'll put my hand over my ear if I'm sleeping uh, to, to give like a little bit of a rigid surface, surface so it doesn't um, touch the earplug. And a lot of times I use earplugs or uh, even, uh, uh, you know, headsets to sleep at night uh, here in Austin if the, you know, the ambient noise level is high. Okay. That's so, a interesting and cheap a little oh innovation yeah I mean, there. it's one of the cheapest things because here's the thing about sleep is where your um, uh, your um, uh, memory integration occurs uh, where you you know integrate everything that happened during the day and keep what's useful and throw away what's cruft also where you do all your cellular regeneration 
And so uh, if you're being kept awake at night by noise, especially like if you're sleeping in somebody else's house where there's a different set of noises that you don't automatically filter out, uh, you know, even sleeping in a quiet house, uh, there might be some sort of noise in the house that uh, uh, kept you in a lighter sleep and kept you out of a deep sleep that you usually have at your own home. So earplugs, I'm telling you, man, that's the, the cheapest number one item on your bailout bag. Yeah, I saw this really cool thing, you know, sometimes uh, people, and uh, it can be on, on both sides, but a lot of women will complain about, uh, you know, being stylish and, and looking, quote, ugly. There's this cool company called Earpiece. I can uh, post it in the in our chat window, but for yeah, this, sure. the purposes of our recording, it's uh, Earpiece, P. E A C E like uh, you know war and peace yeah. be, being peaceful earpiece dot com they've got a stylish I think it's various skin colors and uh, it's meant for people that go to a lot of concerts so it can protect your hearing but still allow some clarity and and not be able to tell that you're even wearing them so cool. That's a little slightly more expensive, but if your goal is more to be stylish, you got another option. There. Yeah. Oh, the other thing about uh, earplugs also be sure and get the. Um the hexagonal foam rubber ones that have no coating. Um, a lot of times the ones you pick up at drugstores will have this like wax coating. And what that does is it, uh, it, uh, disrupts the aspiration of air, uh, between your eardrum and the outside world. And a lot of times those earplugs will cause, uh, infections if you get any kind of microbial activity in your ear. And so it's much better to have those foam uh, rubber earplugs that have no coating, um, so that you're you can get uh, air, um, you know, uh, aspirating uh, to, into your eardrum. It's amazing how we can uh, screw up certain products. And I yeah. don't want to get us don't want to get us off on a tangent, but I saw this one thing about dyes and laundry detergents, and it's like, should we really have all these chemicals in there? What's the need for that? So yeah. So, so number one thing is earplugs. Uh, the number two thing that I would say, uh, spe- uh, this would be if you're flying, is um, uh, the first challenge you've got is, for God's sake, um, please, please refrain from eating any food on airplanes. Um, you know, a great way to get food. They have food on there, or is it uh, well, they've got double s- quote food? They've got stuff that they, you know, Masquer- food. Masquerade is food. They've got stuff that they recommend that they encourage you to put in your mouth. I wouldn't. Um, they label they label it food and offer it to you. Yeah, I mean, I I, I just saw a 2020 thing uh, expose the other day where they were showing all the you know different uh, flies and cockroaches and even uh, rats that were found in the food service areas of planes. It was just ridiculous. Sounds appetizing. Yeah, I mean, it's just completely ridiculous because the standards and inspections on uh, airplane uh, food service is just basically zero. So that means, first off, always carry some food with you. Uh, You can't carry, you know, a bottle of water, but you can do things like, you know, carry a couple of apples, carry some nuts. um, And then the number one food for uh, altitude eating is uh, dulse. Because the dulse has uh, some of the highest levels of iodine uh, available. And so as you eat dulse, that um, iodine will be uh, uptaken into your um, glands, especially your um, uh, thyroid, and will help uh, protect from the radiation. Because when you're flying up at... I was going to ask you about that daytime radiation at high altitudes when you're flying. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're flying during the day at 20,000, 30,000 feet, um, I mean, or I guess 20,000 is about the uh, the normal... Uh, you cruising know, altitude. Cruising yeah. altitude, yeah. I mean, you're you're basically up above um, the... the um, the part of the stratosphere that, uh, or the atmosphere that uh, blocks uh, the bulk of the radiation. A lot of pilots will actually wear uh, uh, lead underwear or lead, you know, coated underwear because um, the sterility uh, in um, uh, male pilots is astronomical. Wow, just in males. I would think the uh, the female flight crew would be affected as well. It doesn't seem to bother uh, eggs, uh, female eggs, near as much as the male uh, sperm. Mm. So, you know, radiation is a serious consideration. So typically, uh, Yamai and I, we travel, we always take uh, bags of dolls and we just munch on it. 
uh, apples, dulse, activated nuts are, I mean, that's typically our uh, air air food that we take with us. And maybe oh, yeah. uh, an avocado or a bell pepper or something. In other words, something that, um, you know, you can just eat with your hands because you can't carry knives. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you can't carry water. There's certainly, because th- water's so dangerous. Yeah, and so. They're are, certainly not going to let you carry a little pocket knife. Right. Hmm. So, so that's yeah. the. So dulse um, is the is the thing we take on the munch. Now, if you don't like the taste of dulse, you can. Um, we sell the bulk, you know, the le- leaf dulse, because um, it's just too expensive to buy other places. That's when we started selling it. Um, and we also have these capsules that, that are half dulse, half uh, kelp, uh, seaweed powder. And uh, so, if you don't like the taste of dulse, just you know, take a bottle of these, and every hour just uh, eat one of the kelp dulse capsules. Just pop a pill, yeah, a just, real a real kind of pill. Yeah, so uh, pop those. So those are, I mean, that's the uh, the uh, air travel is a really uh, challenging, you know, really challenging deal. Well, yeah, yeah, I'd say good advice that I've read and would certainly impart to other people is if you possibly can do the uh, nighttime or red eyes, do those wherever you can. Yeah, if you've got an option to travel at night, you'll feel much better uh, than if you travel during the day. Yeah, step into a, uh, what do they call it, pressurized radiation tube or yeah. don't. Yep. I mean, which is going to be better. So, yeah, those are uh, the two good tips on the travel, and certainly you can't turn off your ears, so having some, some earplugs in there to allow you better rejuvenation uh, yeah. Is excellent. And then, of course, yeah, a little eating tip. So what about if we're driving? Obviously, the earplugs would be a, a good idea uh, or some kind of earphones listening to uh, music or educational stuff uh, through, like, your iPod instead of the road noise. Oh, yeah. Once you actually get to the family location, let's uh, talk about some strategies there. Oh, all right. Um uh, well, there's kind of uh, we'll divide them into two different types of locations. And actually, no, actually, we won't. I, I was going to say, uh, you know, outside the U.S. and inside the U.S., but I do the same thing um, uh, probably either place. Um, uh, oh, just one thing about uh, car travel. Have you ever noticed when you travel long distances in cars that you crave uh, salty things? Have you ever noticed that? I'm expecting a Jeff Foxworthy type of joke here. You, <laughs> you ever might noticed? be a redneck if you know. <laughs> But I noticed this years ago. Um, the only time I ever ate potato chips was when I was driving. I thought, I finally, I, I, you know, I had to ask myself, why is it that the only time I crave huge quantities of salt is when I drive? And if you think about it, mm. Mm. now I don't know. Do you, do, does, do you have that craving when you drive? Do you crave? I noticed that kind of thing. I, I always take a lot of water with me and. Uh, I haven't noticed a severe salt craving. Oh, okay. I well, I, I just noticed a lot of people, I mean, you know, part of it might be boredom. You got no <laughs> Right. Especially if you're driving around, you know, the fields of Texas, like between San Antonio and Laredo, it looks like the same patch of dirt the whole way. Um, so, you know, part of it might be boredom. However, what I noticed was that, or the conclusion I came to, that it was uh, two things. Number one is um, uh, rapid... Um, uh, utilization of uh, minerals at a higher rate than normal because of noise of the road and uh, the um, uh, the exhaust fumes of the road and also just being uh, nervous, you know, dodging, you know, idiots that are uh, playing demolition derby on the highway at freeway speeds. Bumper cars at high yeah. speeds. and High speed uh, bumper cars. What did you do? Well, I remember we were talking about the cadmium that gets thrown off the tires, yeah. and it's what, and the so third one most of, toxic? Yeah, one, one of the things that I do when I'm, uh, a lot of times now when I'm traveling um, uh, on the road is I'll either drink Chocolate Bliss uh, and or uh, Bunch on Dulce even while I'm traveling because it's a really good source of uh, amino acids and uh, minerals together. So, you know, even if you're driving in the car, you know, take the same bailout bag that you'd take if you were going by air, um, you know, apples, nuts, dulse. All right. And so once you get to a location, I guess there, I guess uh, a domestic location is a little bit different than a uh, foreign location. Like if, I, if I'm going to a, um, a domestic uh, address for traveling, I'll typically ship a bunch of food there, and I do that overseas too, but it's different to what I ship. Um, a little bit. Um, 
one of the primary things that uh, I keep on hand if I'm traveling is MMS, uh, which is the uh, that's the uh, uh, isn't that, that fighting league. Pardon? Pardon? Isn't that that fighting league? Uh, MMS. You're talking about uh, you're talking about that uh, thing you do in under the cover of night with Fight Club rules that we don't talk oh, about. No, MMA, right, right, yeah. Anyway, so, putting that on the recording? No, no. Um, so MMS is a it's a type of chlorine that works by ox uh, by weak oxidation instead of chlorination. Like the 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 chlorine in water that you drink, or if or, well. Hopefully nobody's drinking tap water, but if you do drink that, then you'll be chlorinated. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, M- MMS, poisonous, toxic. Yeah, MMS works by um, providing a free oxygen that connects with different things that are low pH, like um, uh, microbes and metals and chemicals and different uh, toxins in the environment. And so, so acid things that you want to get out of your body, it yeah. connects with those and. Yeah, and and the 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 really good thing is that it uh, it just instantly destroys things like um, malaria, uh, the malaria parasite, uh, amoeba, and protozoa, and bacteria, and fungus. So if you're eating things, especially down in Mexico, um, like we soak everything in uh, every every piece of produce we buy when we're down south of the border. What we do is we fill a sink with water and put a cap full of Clorox bleach in. Soak everything for um, you know ten or fifteen minutes, and then rinse it with clean water, not tap water, uh, bottled water, and then let it dry. And then uh, we usually do on a regular basis. We'll do MMS, which will knock out one uh, level of um, of um, uh, different uh, low pH uh, pathogens. And if you can only do one thing, MMS is by far the the best. Now, we, what we also do is uh, high levels of enzymes and olive leaf and copper, which all get different types of um, uh, parasites and fungus at different stages of their growth. Because the worst thing you can do is when you're traveling down south of the border to get, you know, some Montezuma's Revenge or something, that really puts a cramp in your vacation. Yeah, that tends to put a damper on it. Yeah, so, um, you know, in general, um, uh, also a lot of times, you know, relatives will bring bringing food from lo- remote locations. And, you know, if you got uh, uh, some sort of food that's left out at room temperature traveling for a couple of hours, you got all sorts of stuff growing in that. So it's, um, you know, one of the simplest things you can do is just, you know, have a dose of MMS every uh, morning and evening because it'll last for about 12 hours in your body. So if you do it on a 12-hour cycle twice a day, you've got coverage all day, and you never have to worry about any kind of food poisoning or anything like that. Never worry about food poisoning again. That sounds like a, hey, there you go. It sounds a killer like a, article and An topic. information product. And it's covered. One thing, MMS, simple. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that I'd, I'd say as a top priority of having um, uh, with you at all times, whether you're home or traveling, is uh, digestive enzymes, although I'd probably double or triple up on what I took if I was eating other people's food, uh, and also um, uh, probiotics, um, which is a whole other conversation. But anyway... Uh, enzyme, yes. Enzymes start the breakdown of foods into component products, and probiotics continue the breakdown and also assist the assimilation or the movement of those nutrient components through the intestinal wall uh, into the fluid systems. Okay. So, yeah, basically the enzymes allow you, the digestive enzymes allow you to feel better, not get uh, that food coma. That yeah, so many I mean, that's, get. A, that's And the then the probiotics thing. help you really actually use whatever is usable and then yep. eliminate the rest. Yep. So uh, enzymes will um, will cover a multitude of sins. And also, you know, if you eat something, especially, you know, some sort of sugary treat or eat something that somebody slips some animal product into that you're unaware of if you're vegan, uh, if you eat in- enzymes along with your meals, um, uh, you know, you probably won't even notice that, you know, you've had exposure to something like that. Wow, covers a lot of sins. Yeah, that's not not a license that we're saying to go hog wild, but uh, if something does happen, it it allows you to make up for it. Yeah, and all you know, the other couple of things uh, is uh, uh, you know ca- carry uh, some Sunfire salt with you, or you know ship it to people for presents. And vanilla agave, that's another uh, you know it's a good uh, sugar substitute that. Um, 
uh, the glycemic test we got back on our agave, this uh, recent uh, um, uh, crop that we're working with. Um, so white sugar is about 100 on the glycemic level. Honey is about a 90 to 95. It's almost as bad as white sugar. Uh, the agave that we have now is uh, 17. So it's, tr- you know, it's a considerable uh, difference. And, I mean, you could do this testing yourself. You, you know, mix up a quarter cup of uh, sugar in a cup of water and drink it and, you know, check your blood sugar 15 minutes before you do that and 15 minutes after, and you'll see a huge spike. You do the same thing with a quarter cup of agave in a cup of water, and I doubt you'll see any movement of your blood sugar at all. If it's our agave. Now, if you go, you know, randomly pick up some off a grocery, out of a grocery store, all bets are off. I'm just. Talking. I was about to make that yeah, point. I was I'm like, specifically I've seen talking about and, and heard a lot of stories of people buying at grocery stores, and you have no idea how that thing is yep. produced and processed and what's done. So, yeah, it's got to be a specific kind that's had these kind of tests and this kind of vetting. Otherwise, you're going to get bad stuff. Well, otherwise, you could potentially. There's no way to tell. That's the problem. That's why we started packaging our own agave is the only way we could tell exactly what we were getting on our um, our table at home was that we have to import agave by the barrel and they're sealed barrels and they go to our packager and our packager uh, you know adds uh, infuses the vanilla powder into it by the you know by way of the proprietary process that we came up with and package it and seal those those packages again and then when i when when you get a bottle of agave nectar from us ain't nothing in there except agave nectar and vanilla two things there's no surfactants there's no um uh filtering agents there's no uh corn syrup there ain't nothing but agave and vanilla no Period. chemicals or preservatives no chemicals no and nothing. Uh, is that fermented or is that just the chocolate list no, I'm just talking about vanilla agave only. Right. Okay, no, but in terms of your process, and so there's no, uh, the vanilla infusion, there's no high heating or any kind of no, the other no, craziness no, that no, some of these no food heat. manufacturers do. Yeah, in fact, um, um, the, uh, the process we use just runs at ambient air temperature. There's no heat at all. Uh, well, I take that back. If it's in the winter when it's really cold, uh, it's it's a water jacketed um, uh, vat that we use to um, uh, the vanilla's got to be ground down to a nanoized particle size, and so there's a process that has to happen between the agave and the vanilla, and that the the enclosure of the system that runs in is is water jacketed so that in the winter when it's you know 30 degrees that agave nectar or you know if it, it's not that cold but if when when it gets down below about 80 degrees the agave nectar starts being extremely hard to move through the pipes of the system and so when it's uh when it starts getting colder the water jacketed system they raise the water jacket up to 90 degrees and hold the process at 90 degrees which is okay. you know, you know, ninety degrees. That's uh, you know, in the summer, that's um, uh, cooler than mo- a lot of people's houses all over the world. So <laughs> yeah, cooler than the outside temperature. And so yeah. this this nanoized process that really pulverizes it, uh, it still maintains the the cellular structure and the yeah, so the whole molecular structure that your body can actually use as natural. Yeah, the way it works is the vanilla and the agave are mixed together and run through uh, specific equipment that uh, monitors the. St- the particle size, and then as the particle size becomes uh, smaller, then the grinder can become smaller. And because the agave and the vanilla are mixed together at the grind surface, the the liquid of the agave disperses the heat. So in other words, if I ran this process on uh, vanilla powder by itself, the vanilla powder would no longer taste like vanilla afterwards, and it wouldn't have any kind of active alkaloids at all because the heat would destroy it. So that's how we came up with it. You know, I figured, well, you know, if we if we mix the whole thing up and grind the whole thing together, which is extremely time consuming and costly, but it's the only way I could find, come up with that would keep everything at a um, you know uh, a very low temperature. And where it actually has, yeah, it's more expensive, but you're actually getting usable nutrients and minerals instead of paying for something cheaper that basically throwing your money away yeah well and worse with sugar i mean if you if you burn sugar then you now now you've made it extremely um uh, high glycemic if you burn agave if you heat agave uh you can end up with a glycemic level that is approaching the you know the hundred level of sucrose and worse 
worse than sugar is if you heat agave nectar during the processing, that liquid fiber, see a tablespoon of our agave has a gram of fiber because it's liquid fiber. It's uh, soluble and insoluble liquid fiber. And what happens when you burn agave is those fiber strands that you can't see, the microscopic fiber strands, begin to uh, braid together just like you braid a rope. And they get thicker and thicker and stickier and stickier. So you end up with not only high glycemic like sugar, but now you've got this sticky substance that's clogging up all your digestive tract, uh, which is far worse than white sugar. And it's blocking nutrient uptake and it's wrapping around food so food can't be digested properly. So now you end up with digestive tract problems. So, our, you know, indigestion, gas, bloating. So, you know, one of the, the biggest roulette wheels you can spin is uh, getting some kind of liquid sugar product at a grocery store and thinking that uh, you should use it. Oh, in fact, I had, I had a, uh, one of our customers call me the other day and said um, they made the mistake of um, they ran out of agave nectar and were making a batch of chocolate bliss and they just ran out to the grocery store and got some random agave nectar off the shelf. Ha, <laughs> ha! Yeah, I don't know what kind of. I've never seen agave at a regular grocery store. Oh but yeah, okay. you can get I, I all trust the, it. If it was, I, I expect in a couple of years you'll be able to get it at Seven Eleven. It's oh, in wow. it's in every grocery store you go to now. You can find agave. Problem was, they said it came back, made the batch. It tasted okay, but he said half an hour later they're all doubled over with stomach pain <laughs> because you know I don't know exactly why, and I ain't, certainly ain't going to figure it out because I ain't going to eat that stuff. Right. Well, yeah, it's, it goes back to one of our common themes that you have to live by today is you got to know the source, know yep. your food source, you know, from the time it was as best you can, yep. from the time it was picked in the processing. And if you don't know what happened from the time it was uh, created or picked or harvested till right now when it's on your plate or in your glass, uh, could be a problem. Trouble. Yeah, so um, uh, sunfire salt, agave, uh, vanilla, agave nectar are great uh, presents for people. Uh, also, uh, when we travel independent of where we're going, we ship all of our superfoods. Like we'll ship, you know, however much uh, chocolate bliss uh, and agave nectar that we're going to require to make chocolate. And a lot of pe- a lot of times, if like we're going to uh, Some place where we're going to stay for a month or two, um, I'll ship a Vitamix there too, so I've got a good high speed blender. Oh, very right. nice. And here's I was going to ask you about uh, dextrose. That's another. Well, let me, pure let, me ju- let me just wrap up on the, the store. Let me just hang on. A little bit of the glycemic is that uh, an okay thing if they can't uh, get any other kind of sweetener? Well, hang on just a second. Let me wrap up on the shipping thing right quick. Um, okay. Because a, a lot of people are starting to do this. Is uh, a trick when you're shipping stuff too is um, when you ship uh, your um, products to your destination. At the same time, what I recommend is you. Um, uh, also print out a shipping label that ships from that location back uh, and do it with some place like FedEx or UPS that picks up. Um, or I guess the U.S. Postal Service picks up too. So then what you can do is when you're ready to come home, you take the same boxes and you put you put back into it whatever you're going to ship back home and you know, send, a, send a, uh, a, a roll of tape also in one of the boxes and you just tape back the return um, uh, shipping thing and call up the, you know, the, whatever the shipper is and tell them to come pick up the box. And then that makes shipping whatever you've got left over makes it shipping back home easy too. Handy little tip. Handy tip. So, so yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit about if dextrose is a, a viable solution and then maybe any final tips on our holiday survival bailout bag. And yeah, I, I, personally, I personally wouldn't use dextrose because it's an isolate sugar and it's going to be really high glycemic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a good to know. Simple. So. All right. Well, let me, let me yeah. run down. I got a. I got a, a several other things here. I'm going to run over these really quick that are really cool. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Uh, Come strong bail- to the finish line. Yeah, for bailout bags and survival guides, and also presents. Um, next one on my list here I've got is uh, uh, Vitalize. Uh, so a lot of times when you're traveling, your lymphatic system will be um, uh, come uh, stagnant or clogged up from uh, all sorts of um, uh, particulate matter in the atmosphere. In other words, um, uh, uh, 
allergic reactions to pollen or food or stress, whatever, will tend to inflame our sinus passages, and that in turn will um, mess with, uh, well, our sinus passages and our uh, entire lymphatic system, and that in turn will mess with our sleep, disrupt our sleep. So another thing that Yamai and I tend to take on a regular basis when we're traveling is Vitalize. Um, let's see, what else here? Oh, another uh, good thing to take uh, when you're traveling, too, is uh, bee pollen. Um, well, first, what's, uh, what's Vitalize? It's not some kind of enzyme? Or what oh, you no. Vi- you, you haven't described it a little that? bit. You haven't ever used that, Clint? I haven't. Oh. didn't even know you. Oh, yeah. Vitalize is a, it's a capsule. It's an herbal combination that basically just cleans out the uh, any kind of um, uh, lymphatic, uh, lymphatic system precipitate matter that builds up um, and opens up all the lymphatic valves so a person's lymphatic system can drain. Okay. Because if your lymphatic system becomes stagnant and it's not draining properly, then it's it's virtually impossible to sleep. A lot of people's insomnia is because their lymphatic system's blocked. And the first round of Vitalize they take, they, uh, I, my first round, I think I slept for 12 hours. And the highest I've heard so far is a person slept for 16 hours straight after their first dose. Wow, so better than any tranquilizer you can get out there. Well, the thing is that if you've got deferred sleep, then, you know, the first round you take of this, if your sleep's deferred because of lymphatic stagnation and your lymphatic system flushes for the first time in, you know, decades, then all that deferred sleep you'll catch up on. And he said decades. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I wow. mean, a person that sleeps for 16 hours, I guarantee that, you know, that person was 60, 65. I guarantee that person hadn't slept good for decades. There's no way you could sleep for 16 hours. Man, I can't even imagine that. Um, because, you know, I mean, basically they, they literally passed out because there was so much deferred sleep. And when I say deferred sleep, that means all the metabolic processes that run during sleep were backlogged. And so now all of a sudden, for the first time in, you know, decades, this person was able to actually run those metabolic processes. And they, his body basically stayed asleep and out of action so those processes could catch up. And more than likely, the next night, he may have slept 12 hours. The next night, maybe 8 or 10. And then he's probably down to 6 or 8, the third or fourth day of the natural sleep cycle. Because the the good news about lymphatic stagnation and deferred sleep is that it only takes two or three days to catch up. Even after decades, I mean, it doesn't matter how long you've gone. It still only takes two or three days to catch up and uh, redress all the challenges that have um, uh, come up uh, and all the metabolic system deferrals that have come up over the the time that you've had stagnation. That's the most awesome way to get deferred maintenance done. I know if you got a property or anything, it doesn't happen near that fast. So the, the wonders of the body. Yeah, and in fact, you might have figured out this year... Um, you know, when ragweed season comes around here, occasionally she'll have a little bit of respiratory uh, uh, congestion. <clears throat> and she figured out that all she had to do was uh, take uh, Vitalize, and it cleared out her uh, lymphatic system so well that even though her uh, lymphatic and mucous membranes were inflamed, she didn't have any symptoms because everything was flowing so freely, which I thought was really cool. I thought that was a really interesting application she came up with. That is very cool because I've read people that suffer with uh, asthma and allergies that sunflower seeds were a potential uh, good thing to help out with that. Yeah, but boy, you got to be real careful because if you take if you just eat random sunflower seeds, they're going to be more than likely have mold um, on them. Uh, you, again, Burned, roasted, salted, you know. All yeah, basic yeah, again, stuff. Uh, yeah, especially sunflower seeds because uh, anything, any oily seed, you better. Only buy those from a source uh, like us or a couple of people that we recommend that um, maintain all their seeds in cold storage. Uh, Because anything like uh, chia, hemp, uh, golden flax, sunflower, uh, anything like that uh, that has a high oil content, if you uh, let that oil rancidify, then, boy, if you eat those things, you're going to have some serious inflammation. Yeah, we don't want that. So you talked about... Vitalize. What was that next thing you? Oh, were the next thing for, that also is really good for um, uh, uh, protecting against or um, uh, you know remediating uh, inflammation, especially that has to do with uh, allergic reactions to, to uh, 
uh, breathable matter like uh, pollen is uh, bee pollen. And there's this myth that the reason bee pollen works is, you know, you got to use local pollen so it matches the, uh, you know, the pollen in the area. Well, that's just a bunch of hooey. Um, pollen solves the pollen problem. That's, yeah. Well, that's I mean, that's interesting. It's, 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 an old, it's an old wives' tale. It's incorrect. What the the substance in bee pollen that that um, are there two substances in bee pollen that really help with uh, allergic. Uh, in any type of inflammation uh, challenges, and that's histidine and lecithin. So, anytime a person has that, um, you know, that uh, expulsion of fluid out of their eyes or nose or closing up of their throat, uh, that's because of a, a specific type of cell called a mast cell that's dying inside their body, and the, that those symptoms are actually the the expulsion of the destroyed cell matter. So, if you have allergic symptoms. Like eyes red and um, you know weeping and uh, uh, nose sinus expulsions. That's actually in in most cases, uh, the majority of that is dead cells, and that's really bad. And the primary reason those cells die is because um, uh, allergens um, or allergic uh, components in the air tend to put a stress on these cells and. Uh, most people are so deficient in histidine or histidine that they um, uh, don't have the cellular integrity for those cells to survive the onslaught of allergens. And so all you got to do is eat bee pollen. What you're looking for is the highest quality of bee pollen, not whether it's from a local area. Like in Texas, there ain't no way to get good bee pollen in Texas because the fire ants get in the, the pollen traps. It's Killer just, bees don't produce good pollen? Pardon? Killer bees don't produce good pollen? Well, actually, killer bees do, but uh, harvesting them uh, is probably going to be a challenge. Some of the best bee pollen in the world comes from the, the uh, Amazon rainforest, and that ma the majority of that is from uh, killer bees or bees that have been crossbred with killer bees now. And that stuff is in, is great. It's just I wouldn't want to be the one harvesting it. Yeah, I would not have predicted that. But, and, yeah, you're right. That, that's not a job I want. That, yeah, maybe and, that and, can be on that dirty jobs uh, show. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then the other substance in bee pollen that's really effective at um, assisting with um, allergic reactions is lecithin because lecithin actually allows you to build uh, mucus fluid faster so that if you do have any kind of cell death, the... Um, uh, the expulsion of that matter is much, much faster. Also, lecithin is the primary component in, um, or a primary component in uh, uh, women's um, uh, vaginal fluids and also in uh, men's um, uh, seminal fluids. And so, you know, the whole reproductive system really, a lot of it hinges on the uh, quantity and quality of lecithin a person ingests. And a lot of people eat eggs because it's real, they're really high in less than. However, a tablespoon of bee pollen will have the equivalent to 20 to 30 uh, egg yolks of lecithin. Wow. So way better to eat bee pollen. Yeah, and you don't have the, uh, the high acid effects. Well, you don't have the acid the effect animal. and you don't have the cholesterol. There's no cholesterol. Yeah, the in eggs. It. In fact, there's no cholesterol at all in the whole plant kingdom. Cholesterol is only found in in animals, so you know you got a cholesterol problem. I got a I got an idea. Stop eating cholesterol. I got a guy. You got a cholesterol problem. All right, let, let me let uh, me run down. So the, yeah, were there some some other final tips? Yeah. So another couple of things. Um, a lot of times when you're eating at other people's homes, uh, what they've got to eat is different than what you're interested in eating. So what you can do is um, you know take a um, <clears throat> Take or ship to your location some uh, uh, Fiesta Mole and uh, EFA oil or Buriani's uh, olive oil that we sell. And, you know, just put mole and olive oil on your um, uh, salad or veggies. Great, great way to, you know, turn a salad into a meal is just put some Fiesta Mole and oil on it. Oh, okay. Because the mole and the oil have uh, the fats and proteins and amino acids yeah, and other they, things and, that you need to complete it. Yeah, they taste really good too. Um, so that's um, that's good. And also, you know, the mole makes a great present too because people can just dump it on whatever. And the other thing you can use on your salads is, um, uh, you know, we ship containers of our hemp seeds to you know wherever we're going to, uh, because hemp seeds are, I mean, they taste fantastic. Uh, and they're really good sources of um, a really good source of protein and, and uh, fatty acids. 
So that's cool. So mole is a, a catch-all taste enhancer mm-hmm. that people can use as a spice or an herb. Yep. And then the uh, what was it? Oh, the hemp seeds. You yeah, get a hemp real seeds, high yeah. source of protein. Yeah, and also uh, good fatty acids and fiber. And then I got uh, I got four more here that are I'm going to go down real fast. Is um, uh, vitamin D3. So we sell these little bottles of D3 for I think ten or twelve bucks. And if you're going someplace that's really dark uh, and you'd like to maintain your mood and energy level, take D3 with you. Because you know if you get no sunlight, then your vitamin D uh, levels are going to go down. Your ability to digest food and maintain your mood and energy is going to drop. Um, B complex is another one we ship to ourselves because um, <clears throat> your, immune, your immune system, besides running off of, of uh, the vitamin D, it also another big um, component is the B complex, and so we typically take that with us, and we also take uh, our primal C, uh, vitamin C, with us, which is another immune system hinge or uh, cornerstone, and so those three vitamins together, D, uh, D, B, and C. You know, if you're taking those on a regular basis while you're traveling, your your um, <clears throat> overall experience, energy and mood wise, is probably going to be much higher. And then the last item I had on my list here is um, uh, a lot of times when people go, especially into relative situations, <clears throat> they're under a lot of stress. You know what I mean, buddy? <laughs> Lo- lo- yeah, absolutely. A lot of people have uh, familial interactions that are less than pleasant, and so it's you know, unfortunate, but yeah, for sure. I mean, the, f- the first thing I'd say, you know, ship chocolate bliss to yourself and make sure there's a good blender there, and you know, make um, you know, keep a gallon of chocolate bliss in the refrigerator for you and everybody else to drink. And uh, you know, if you're going to be in a situation where you know you're going to have um, a familial uh, Interactions that are abrasive and stressful. I'd I'd uh, take a container of guarana too and add like a tablespoon or two to every gallon of chocolate bliss. And if you don't have chocolate bliss, you know I'd just take them some guarana and mix it up in, in a little water with uh, maybe a dash of um, agave nectar and shake it up and just drink it. Yeah, or they can uh, get the the combo that you have in the jungle bliss that has the guarana in it. Uh. Yeah, but the the jungle bliss. Unfortunately, there is no jungle bliss right now because we can't get any jungle pollen right now. <laughs> oh, okay. So out of stock. Mm-hmm. But check back depending different times of year. Yep. So um, yeah, guarana is really good for uh, maintaining your um, uh, energy systems in the in the face of um, extreme uh, stress, which is also why you know people tend to. Um, that have been under low grade or high grade stress for years and years uh, when they've had their first dose of uh, uh, high grade guarana, not the junk that you buy out of the grocery stores. But for I had some guy talk to me the other day. He said, you know, I didn't want to buy your, um, I don't know what we sell ours for. It's probably about $25 a pound or something. He said, I found something at a grocery store for $3 a pound. So I thought, mm, 25 3 I think I'll try the 3 He said, well, that was a mistake. He said he, the first hint he had something was wrong was, uh, he said, first off, it just didn't look right. It had, you know, blacks and and weird brown colors in it that he'd never seen before. And he thought, all right, well, it's $3. I'm going to give it a try anyway. He said his second indication, he mixed it up, and he said there was an oily scum on top of his chocolate bliss. I'm like, dude, at Ooh, that, at that point, scum. At that point, I would have said that was garden bliss instead of drinking bliss, right? You put it on that, your garden, don't drink yeah, it. Yeah, it's like breaking an egg. That's a batch that's just ruined. Right. Toss it out. Yeah, that's a batch that's got to go. And he said, but then, you know, he said, but, you know, he needed some chocolate bliss or he was ready for his chocolate bliss for the day. And he said, well, so I went ahead and drank it anyway. He said, well, that was a mistake. He said it took him a day or two to recover. He said his stomach was upset and he he never threw up really, but he was just, it completely crashed his energy and mood. So rule of thumb is... You know, there's a reason that high-quality superfoods uh, are a little bit more of a premium price because the manufacturing chains are managed in such a way that we know what we got at the end of the retail package. And, you know, there you know, there's a difference between, you know, $20, $25 a pound guarana and 2 or $3 a pound guarana, which, by the way, if the store is selling it for $3, they probably bought it for a dollar a pound. Yeah, and it it goes back to that thing, especially when you're talking about the food chain and the food supply. 
yes, things can be done cheaper, but to do that, you've usually got to cut corners that are highly undesirable oh, to bad. Yeah. your body and you know upset stomach and all these other kinds of issues that can come up that are uncomfortable. Yep. So um, anyway, there's your... Uh 2012 um, <clears throat> Holiday Survival Guide and Bailout Bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine it'll work in 2013, 2014, yeah, well, based on you the know, fundamentals. I usually do one of these every year, and, and they, you know, the, pretty much at this point, um, uh, we've pretty much got everything uh, in our product line that will resolve most of the things I talked about. The only thing with the final product we're adding to our product line uh, this year that um, it's the first product we've added in years um, uh, that's a unique product uh, is um, uh, we just uh, completed a license for importing the um, uh, the probiotics that almost every company waters down to put in their probiotic products, the, all the high quality alternative health sites. Right. And so we're, we're actually going to start uh, providing the, the, um, the paste. Like you'll be able to buy like a container of paste. It'll be really expensive because one of these, you know, four four or five ounce jars of paste may go into making hundreds of thousands of capsules of probiotics. So what you'll get from this is you'll get the actual probiotic material that most people are using to produce their um, uh, encapsulated products and also doing their um, vegetable and supplement uh, fermentation. You know, there's, you'll notice a lot of people are uh, like the uh, a lot of the vitamins now are fermented because it makes the, them highly assimilable. So, you know, the, this is uh, the actual material that most of the the uh, commercial uh, labs and manufacturing plants use in their fermentation process. So if you're making fermented vegetables or kefirs or, uh, you know, cheeses out of nut, nut cheeses, you can actually uh, have the fermentation technology that most of the, the big guys use now. Very cool. Cool. All right. Awesome. Any, anything else, uh, any other questions that came up that I missed? No, I think we covered it great. We covered the the uh, mental part in the the first part of our talk here with the resolutions. We covered the uh, practical application tips for traveling and for rejuvenating sleep and then for uh, nourishment and food. And actually, you threw in some cool tips about if you don't have the best relationship with your whole family or (laughs) certain family members to still enjoy that holiday time, which was fantastic. So, yeah, I think we're good, man. We can go ahead and wrap this call. Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll catch up with you again soon, Clint. All right, David. Sounds great, man. Talk to you later. Ciao.